We've already learned how to write chemical equations, so now we have to learn how to write thermochemical equations. These are chemical equations that actually include thermochemical data like enthalpy. One common example is HCl being added to water and dissociating into its ions, H plus and Cl minus. The dissociation of HCl into its ions is exothermic. Heat is released. And we can represent that in an equation by saying HCl goes to H plus and Cl minus and heat. Heat is released. Heat is basically a product of that reaction. Unfortunately, we can't just write heat. We need to include something about a delta H. So while this is representative of what's actually happening, the way we should be writing it is by including a delta H term in the equation. So the proper thermochemical equation is HCl goes to H plus plus Cl minus and delta H is less than zero. And this gives us a sensible thermochemical equation. We can do a similar thing for the combustion of methane gas. Methane plus two oxygen gases gives you carbon dioxide and water. Any combustion reaction is exothermic. It gives off a ton of heat. So again, we can represent this sensibly as CH4 plus 2O2 goes to CO2 and water and heat, where heat is a product. Heat is given off by that reaction. But again, we don't want to represent it that way. We want to represent it in terms of enthalpy, so a delta H should be included. Delta H is less than zero for an exothermic reaction. Another example is the reaction of solid water going to liquid water, so ice melting. This is a type of reaction where it's not immediately obvious whether or not it's exothermic or endothermic, but as soon as you think about it in terms of where the heat's going, it becomes much more clear. In order for solid water to go into liquid water, it has to absorb heat. You have to heat the ice up in order to make it melt. So that means heat is actually a reactant in this equation. Heat plus water that's solid gives you liquid water. And again, this is a great pictorial way to represent it, but we need to do so in terms of an, a delta H, an enthalpy. And endothermic reactions, reactions where you absorb heat, have a delta H that's positive. So we have delta H that's positive, greater than zero. It's also possible for a reaction to run in the reverse direction. In the case of water, we can have liquid water freezing again and becoming solid. And in this case, the heat change is different. The heat change is reversed from the melting process. Liquid water has to lose heat in order to become solid. It has to get colder. So we have a different type of reaction. In this case, we have heat being released in order to go from liquid to solid. Anything that's released or emitted has to be on the product side. So we can say that heat is a product. Liquid water has to lose heat in order to become solid. This is an exothermic process. And that means, again, in terms of a delta H, we have a delta H that is less than zero. So the signs of a reaction, signs of the enthalpy change for a reaction, will be reversed if the direction of the reaction is reversed.